The following program has been rated GE. It is therefore suitable for general viewer. show I really thank God for this opportunity uh, my name is Benjamin Kinga uh, if you have been watching this program I'm sure we you may have come across uh, me once or twice and I'm really grateful uh, I'm married to one wife she's called Damaris and we are blessed with two children and above all, I'm born again and I love doing business, I'm involved in business, that's why I'm sure that we will interact and we'll get to learn together. Allow me first to bring out a difference or uh, to explain something. We mistake many times, many businesses mistake customer relationship with friendship. Those are two different things. Uh, we talk about customer relationship as the relationship that is built solely on the basis of business. It doesn't go beyond the boundaries of business. But when we talk about friendship, friendship now goes beyond the boundaries of business. But many business people make a mistake of assuming that once they are friends with their customers, uh, that is what is customer relationship. It's not really the case. I know you have heard it said many times that uh, business and friendship do not mix. So customer relationship is that journey that you take customers through from the process of meeting them to selling your product or your service to the moment they come and you know purchase that product or that service and you as a business person you are able to retain that customer at the end of the day so it is basically that process it's why what I want to call, it's not just customer relationship, we call it customer experience. It is beyond customer service. It is beyond even customer relationship. The experience that you give the customer from the moment he or she meets you or comes into your business to the moment they purchase your product to the moment that they will come back again as a repeat customer. All that is an experience. And there is something you need to know. People will always remember the experience more than they remember the product. So when you give your customers a good experience in the process of doing business with them, that is what they will go away with and that is what may cause them to come back to your business or never to come back so customer relationship is is built with time some of the strategies that you can use is what we call uh you know the campaigns uh, to meet customers for example we can have exhibitions, uh, road shows, we can have activations. Those are the campaigns that you can use to meet or to get to have new customers. And now once those customers come and they purchase the product or the service, there is what you can do 
through that process to ensure that they get satisfied. Uh, one of the strategies is ensuring that you, you interact or you relate with them well. How you speak to them, the language that you use. Number two, answering of their questions. Many times people want to, they have questions in their mind concerning a certain product. And once those questions are answered effectively, that person will feel satisfied and may end up purchasing your product. So the, the way you approach your customers when they have questions, there are times many people feel like uh, a customer is bothering them by asking them too many questions. But that is part of the experience. There are people who feel satisfied just by having their questions answered. They have no problem to buy or to pay for that product. So one of the strategies is by training your staff on how to uh, speak to customers and number two, how to answer their questions. If the product needs some form of demonstration, that uh, customer needs to understand how that demonstration takes place or what is or how that product is used rather so in the demonstration your staff or that person selling the product needs to do it in a way that the customer will understand the use of the product in a way that is so satisfying and therefore they can buy the product so i would say your staff if you are not the one personally if you have employed people to, to 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 sell on your behalf or to work together with you they need to be trained especially on customer experience so that they may handle the customers in a very effective way uh, as part of the strategy of customer relation we can also involve uh, what we call promotions promos we we have seen that a lot especially in the digital or the online uh, market uh, space promos help to attract or to keep the customers interested in your product you can give what we call offers or sales uh, you maybe you say 50 percent discount on some product that is part of customer relation you want your customers to feel that you you think about them you want the best uh, for them as far as uh, that product is concerned so those are a few of the strategies that you can involve but what i would like to say mostly ensure that when it comes to the interaction, if need be, training has to be done so that your staff and yourself who is in the business can ensure that you give your customers the best experience uh, they can get out there. Personalization is a very um, important aspect when it comes to customer relationship. Uh, I, I started by saying that people will always remember the experience more than the product. So one of the important things when it comes to customer relationship is personalizing your relationship with them. Make them feel like you are addressing them on a personal level without becoming personal. I hope you understand. You are not being personal, you are not being subjective, you are being objective. For example, when you are sending messages, and I should have mentioned that in the earlier question, one of the ways that you become personal or you personalize your relationship with customers is by addressing them um, you know, directly. 
For example, if you have their contacts and you want to address them, you want them to maybe get to know a new product, you need to address them personally. Like my name is Benjamin. So when I see a message, dear Benjamin, uh, thank you for being our customer. You know, that in itself makes me feel like I belong. It makes me feel like I own or am part and parcel of that business. It makes me feel appreciated as a customer. So personalization is effective. When you personalize your, your communication as part of the customer relationship, what you, what you are doing in the minds of your customers is, like, is that you are making them feel that you value them and you appreciate them. Also, well, as part of customer relationship, you can get to, you know, get to know what products do specific customers love. What are their specifications, for example? I usually see this happening so much. For example, when we talk about the automotive industry or even in the real estate, in the construction industry, many people want to have that personal touch so you need to seek to understand what are the preferences what are the likes what are the the things that the customer likes their interests uh, their preferences i say that uh, so that once you produce a product that is in line with their preferences and tastes, that makes them feel valued. It makes them feel like they are part and parcel of your business. And where there is that personal touch, customers will show a lot of what we call customer loyalty. They will become loyal to your business because that is where they get personal touch. If you look at the hotel industry, for example, these high-end hotels, before they present a menu, they have to ask the customer or, or that person who wants to have a meal, they have to ask them what their preferences are. And I, I wouldn't give those examples because I'm not in the hotel industry. But I know we have heard or we have seen that. So when you are ordering that food, you feel that personal touch when that food is made according to your preferences and your tastes. So that's the, another very important aspect of, personali uh, of, of customer relationship, that is personalization. Have a database of your customers, get to know their requirements or their specifications and address them on a personal level. That one will make them respond better. As I said earlier, um, the strategies that we use for customer relationship or what you are saying, customer engagement, they vary depending on the business. So, they are customers that uh, it depends with the kind of customers that one is targeting or uh, you, the customers that they want. That is how, what will determine how you engage with them. Uh, I, I gave examples of uh, activations. Activations, an activation for maybe somebody who may not understand. This is where you uh, go out there to your customers. Maybe you pitch a tent, uh, you present your products or your services and engage with customers directly. 
it may be in a, a public place for example a mall or a market uh, and that way you will engage with so many customers and and you will uh, you will see successful uh, turnover of customer customers uh, another engagement that uh, is is quite effective is is what we call the uh, road shows or uh, you know campaigns you may have uh, the campaigns you may also use the media to engage with your customers uh, you may have a campaign running on a radio station for example so some of those engagements are, are very effective where you are able to interact uh, once you have those customers, you can also engage them with uh, uh, what we call the maybe seminars or uh, a, a demonstration uh, meeting. Let's say you are introducing a new product. You can call your customers for a, for a meeting, a, a, a seminar, a training, so that you may uh, get to show them the new product to demonstrate it to them uh, you may also even have maybe dinners i've i've seen some of the companies uh like the in the real estate uh come up with events like dinners uh luncheons uh, just to get to interact with your customers cocktail parties those are some of the effective uh strategies that you can engage uh, to to have continuous interaction with your customers yes wow uh, when we talk about the world of social media this has changed the ball game altogether and let me start by saying that business is now shifting more towards the online space so i would like to encourage uh, businesses out there try and align yourself with the online space because that is where business is going let me start by saying different clients have different uh, approaches when it comes to social media we have clients who you may approach not through facebook you may approach them let's say through linkedin for example or uh, or Twitter, what we call X now. Uh, we have those who you interact with through WhatsApp, and especially where you have a customer database, you may open a wall or, a, or, or a group for your customers where you can interact with them. We have Facebook, which is uh, a major, um, social media platform for many businesses uh, we have instagram we have seen companies that are huge on instagram and there is the particular customers they are targeting when they use uh, that particular social media platform so it's good to know your business and the clients that you are targeting in order to see which is the best uh, platform uh, which is the most effective platform that you can use when we talk about the best practices these are the do's and the don'ts when it comes to the involvement of social media we have seen a lot of uh, malpractices let me use that word when it comes to social media where there is breach of privacy, for example. Let me give you a practical example. A, pa a person may purchase your product uh, with all, uh, you know, confidence and trust. But you go ahead and post that picture and post it all over social media, uh, posting that customer purchasing that particular product, for example, a piece of land or a home. 
that person did not really want uh, that publicity. But you go ahead and for the sake of your marketing strategy, you post that picture and that may infringe on the privacy of that particular customer. So it's always good to involve uh, a lot of wisdom and uh, a lot of uh, secrecy and trust. It's good to engage customers and allow them to have the benefit or rather allow them to decide whether they want to be public, publicly seen or they want you know even their names or their their identity to be noticed or, or to be seen before posting on social media we also need to ensure that we do not uh, tarnish or uh, you know kind of uh, bring out your competitors in a negative light i have seen it uh, not once not twice where companies are are at war with each other or businesses are at war with each other on social media because maybe one business brought out its competitor in a very negative light it's good we engage fair competition do not uh, spoil or do not tarnish the the name of your competitor in the name of marketing uh, or in the name of attracting customers so as part of customer relationship social media can be very effective but within the boundaries that are acceptable uh, customers will interact more on social media so it's good you ensure as part of the best practices that there is prompt response to their messages or inquiries we need to that's why you need to engage a social media te uh, a team or personnel that will purely be involved in the social media space so that we won't have uh, maybe questions inquiries that go unnoticed or un unattended and responded to that one demo uh, demotivates the customer uh, hugely uh, we also can say when it comes to the issue of putting out your product out there you also need to uh, or as a business you need to also ensure that people will not be involved in a you know uh, copying or uh, let me say uh, stealing of your ideas copying your ideas and hence uh, denying you the privilege of that visibility that you you need to see so you need to also be careful don't just uh, share your ideas blindly on on the platform it's good you uh, involve a lot of uh, privacy and secrecy uh, to avoid some of these things one of the major uh, parameters that you can use to uh, measure customer satisfaction is feedback and and let me say feedback is everything when it comes to a business because feedback is what tells you how you are doing what you need to do better what you need more to do and so feedback needs to be given appropriately and effectively and as part of customer satisfaction we need to have a, a mechanism uh, that ensures that customers can give their feedback quickly and effectively so as i have given an example earlier we need to have a customer service personnel somebody who 
is is purely involved in customer all that space of customer relationship for example in the social media we need to have somebody who responds to customers questions concerns complaints and all that also you as a business let's say if your business is not big enough to employ somebody in that in that uh, uh, department what you can do ensure that you continuously engage your customers and the major question that you need to ask is what can we do better many times businesses fear to ask that question because you fear like you fear that people will criticize your business and people will criticize your product what i call criticism as is rightly put is an opportunity it's not good to take criticism negatively take it as an opportunity to become better so once you ask your customers what can i do differently in other words you are telling them or you are telling yourself rather i want to become better so i need to take this as an opportunity to make my business better to make my product better so have an uh, active engagement with your customers as far as feedback is concerned when you sell a product take time interact with your customer ask them how did you find that product how did you find my service were you satisfied what can i do better or what can we do better as a business and that way you will always ensure that you are coming out better you are coming up with better solutions better ideas that will make your business better i would give businesses advice on number one, ensure that you get competent people who can be able to handle your social media and who can be able if, if uh, eventually to to handle your customers better uh, many businesses do not want to really invest in this and the way the world is going only the best will survive so if you can get somebody young get somebody uh you know with that experience and with that knowledge and know-how on how to handle uh, your social media and also how to handle your customers also number two get to 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 involve yourself get to see what is happening in the market what are other businesses doing how are they doing it uh, i'm not saying this so that you copy but it will also it will just give you a clearer picture of how the world of business or how the business uh, business is being done when it comes to the online space so get to get to uh, familiarize yourself and I'm, I'm speaking especially to uh, the older folk who maybe social media has not yet really become their thing it is it is the high time that we accept that uh, social media is here with us so we need to familiarize ourselves that's why i'm saying if you can get somebody young get somebody energetic somebody with the ideas and the experience it doesn't harm they will do much uh, benefit to your business at the end of the day when it comes to customer relationship i said training training is very important so that every day your staff or even yourself you become better when it comes to uh, giving your customers the best experience customer complaints 
they are not necessarily bad it's not really a bad thing if you are to look at it uh number one a customer complaint can either be genuine or not genuine but at the end of the day it it should actually provoke your mind to think beyond and to see what you need to do to avoid a repeat of the same so you need to handle your customer complaints maturely i know there are people who get offended and it's i have even seen and heard uh, of instances where it even gets uh, physical <laughs> so it, it's it, you need to handle it in a mature way you would rather lose that customer who is aggressive uh, rather than uh, trying to contend or you know trying to uh, fight with them or conflict with them uh, if you find that somebody is getting towards the aggressive side just leave it at that if it it might even involve some losses it's okay you'd rather lose that sale you'd rather lose that customer and keep your reputation so customer complaints get to list them down and if you see repeated complaints then you need to know that actually there is a problem so have an aggressive uh, strategy to 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 address some of these complaints look at them as opportunities see what you need to do to improve and if it is negative just for the sake of being negative you know i would say this there are people who just want to uh, discourage somebody when it comes to business so if you find that it's negative without the aim of improving you you know somebody just wants to discourage you do not allow it to get into your mind and to your heart let it go take only that uh complaints or suggestion that are meant to make you better are meant to better your business and that way you'll be able to to turn them into the opportunities that they are uh for your business my parting shot is to any person in in business customers are your biggest asset in the business how you handle them how you keep them it's dependent on on you you need to always seek to improve yourself uh, when it comes to matters handling of your customers if you find that maybe you are not uh, your personality may not really allow you to do that get somebody em- employ somebody with that skill and with that personality with that ability to handle your customers on your behalf i have seen of business people who take a back seat they 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 really interact with their customers maybe because they know themselves they know their temperament they know their limits so if you know that maybe you don't have the patience to handle your customers uh to their satisfaction you can get somebody to handle that's why many companies and businesses have the customer experience department so that that way you can handle all the complaints all customer issues and that way your business will will succeed otherwise thank you for watching it has been a pleasure to uh interact with you and to share those few uh tips with you thank you so much and god bless you so this is benjamin kinga thank you for watching prayer kit tv this is my source show